I have one, but I don't know where it's at. So don't worry about it. I don't plan on, I don't plan on uh, sweating today. That's hot. It's, is it? Oh, okay. I didn't know if it had been snotted. Okay. You've been crying. I didn't know. God's good. Amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I love you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm trying with you. God is good. Amen. Let's bow our heads one more time. I'm going to help Sherry out right here. Close your eyes. Bow your heads. You are disobedient people. Oh, we got to get the whole row. Don't bother what I'm doing. Just, just don't pay attention. Okay, you can open your eyes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think so. If not, we got the security camera. We can take them out that way. <laughs> we're trying to get better in making sure that we're taking attendance, but we also are having problems with our system. Some people are checking in, and it's not reg registering, so we're trying to get that fixed. And the whole purpose is so that we can be better pastors, so we can keep up with what's going on in your life, keep checking on you, and when you're not here, call you. Because if we don't call you, then you get upset at us. But you get upset if, it's, if, if we call and check on you anyway. So I figure I'll call and check on you and have you mad at me that way. <laughs> versus not calling you and check on you and forget about you. Amen? Amen? All right. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm ready for football. <laughs> you guys are acting like your best, your favorite team lost already. Good Lord. You're on, you're on the winning team. Well, some of you are. We'll get the rest of you on the winning team here in a second. All right? How's that? Go Cowboys, go Eagles, go Redskins, go whoever. May your day be filled with food and laughter and joy. May your team win. Go with me to 2 Timothy, please, chapter 1. I uh, had a lot of stuff on my heart, had nothing on my heart, had a lot of different this and that going on, and I was looking at one thing, and, and God kind of showed this to me, so I, this may be a couple parts, it may be one, I don't know, but it's just something that kind of laid, kind of, not like, kind of jumped out at me as I was trying to uh, uh, look at some other things. Um, really, it was... Uh, well, I'll give too much away if, uh, if I say that. I can't say that. Um, excuse me. Um, Second Timothy. Um, we're going to cover all of Second Timothy. So, are you ready? Yes. Got thirty minutes. You ready? Yes. All right. <laughs> Junior. Punch throat. All right. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace and mercy, peace from God, the Father, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Timothy means, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get back up there. Hold on a second. Timothy means dear to God. I want you to, I know this is a joke a lot around here, but I want you to look and turn to your neighbor in all seriousness. And, and no joking, I know I, we make a lot of fun and do a lot of stuff, but I want you to look at a neighbor, grab partner up with somebody, and I want you to tell them, you are dear to God. Greg, did your wife leave you? 
You're dear to God, brother. Okay. Awesome. She's an awesome woman. You are dear to God. I, you, I want you to understand that you are precious. You are awesome. Uh, you are not the movie precious and all get messed up. You are an awesome person. God loves you. You've been crying this morning. Your makeup is all messed up. Mess- right. Pastor Annette prayed for you, didn't she? Yes. yes, that's what happens to me. My makeup runs when she prayed for me, too. <laughs> God loves you, and you're dear to him. Uh, there's this, there's this, this one thing I want to say and be done and go home. <laughs> Two things that are, are, are just kind of bubbling up to me, and that is the garbage that's going on in the world and then how it flows into the church. Um, and, and that's, there's two parts to that, but, and then the other is that, that we're, we're coming to, to things are fixing to get crazy. I just feel it. I just know it. But this, 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 but two things keep rising up and that is, 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 is the perversion and all that. But then the other thing that keeps rising up and keeps, keeps, just kind of just right there, and it is, we are all about us and us. We are full of me. We are all about me. We love us some me. And that's where the perversion comes in, because we love ourselves so much. Because we want to please ourselves. You can go really far with that one, can't you? Um, but the thing is, is because we don't know who we are. And if you come here, you, you, I'm going to slap you if you don't know who you are. I tell you all the time who you are. We talk about it all the time. But, uh, you know, and I need to slap myself because it doesn't seem to be getting across because we don't know who we are. And the world is consumed with itself and, and all what it can get, and it's bleeding into the church. And in and, and chapter 3, and I'm just kind of ruining everything, I, I guess I, re- I am ready to go home. Uh, I, I wanted to build up to this, but it, it, I, and I really don't know what I'm doing. This all, this... <sighs> okay. I just want to go, bleh, and y'all will figure it out. Exactly. Sort out the peas. Very good. Um, because, see, what I don't want you to take from this is this is about anybody or you. Or this is about all of us. You know, because we can look at this and we can see this person and we can see that person and we can see all this. And you can point figures all day long, but the eyes will go saying, one going that way, three coming back this way. You know, all that. Hoopla. But... We don't know who we are, so we, th- we then lash out. And we, we, it, stuff is going out in, 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 the, in the public. And one that started this train of thought was there was this Baptist preacher that was coming against uh, the, the lady that stood up for, for uh, same-sex marriage, and she, and she got jailed and all that. And he came against her and, and self-righteously and pompous piously proceeded to say how everything that she was doing was about her and basically she should have just kept her mouth shut and, and, and don't and don't address it and b- bottom line what he was trying to say was you know that we need to be, live quietly among the, the people out there and we need to hold back our, ourselves and and then this other guy came on, and they, were, they talked language that was way above my head. Um, it was probably fifth grade. Uh. <laughs> anyway, they're talking. They're going back and forth. And, and he's like, basically, and I'm all ticked off because I'm like, you're doing the very thing that you're complaining about her about. 
and it hit me. See, all things are permissible, but not all things are good. He says, take the beam out of your own eye before you try to remove the speck. And we want to correct the world who is living for Satan. We can't expect him to live by the standards that we live by. And then it's us. we got to walk in a place of forgiveness. But that doesn't mean that we don't address the issue. But we've got to be to the place where we're not full of us. So when someone comes and says something to us, that we can address it and let it. See, we've got to bring it before everybody. And everybody says, this is this and this and this. And you say, oh, yeah, that's right. I need to fix it. But we don't. We defend ourselves. And then we try to defend ourselves in public. And we try to take Christian principles to a non-Christian nation and try to get them to live by them. They're not going to. We're looking for the government to save us. Jesus is our only Savior. And we got to live it out at home. I mean, he made some good points. It's like, you know, we, we want to we make this stance and be all this vain glory and all this look at me, but then we don't want to do the things that we need to do. But then the other guy came back and said, well, look, look, um, is she not forgiven? Is she not, uh, you know, because she had three marriages or whatever? That's the past. That don't. Don't, you know, you can't, you can't condemn, nobody could get up and stand up. But see, that's the trick of the enemy, to get us all confused and arguing about a, a bunch of stuff so we can disqual everybody so everybody can just do what they want. And we're so dumb, we're like cows at a new gate. What? Heading to the machine, shh, pow, going down the aisle. How many have been into a slaughterhouse? That's what I'm talking about. That is some nasty stuff, dude. And they have this thing right in the middle of their forehead, and they're moving, and then, boop, they're not moving anymore. And we're off to the slaughterhouse. <clears throat> But the thing is, is that she needs to, need to stand up and make a stance. She needs to, There's nothing wrong with that. And then when somebody points out, you're right. She needs to quickly agree with her adversary. You're right. I did have three marriages. But it was wrong, and now I'm standing in rightness, and a marriage is between a man and a woman, and that's what God says, and that's the way I need to go. And all of us who are then defending that right, defending that, need to get behind her and not condemn her because she had three marriages. Now, if she's living with someone, she's doing something, then we need to address it and set her down. Then you need to shut up, clean your own house. But not that way. But you know what I mean. I I'm quick and easy to get to the point and let's get done. We bring in a pastor to say, no, not that way. This is the way we go. That's why we have a five-fold ministry. Because if we were all apostolic, we would all be laid out on the floor dead. Right? If we were all teachers, we'd all be in this all day long. Oh, my God, will they ever shut up? If, we, if they were all pastors, everybody would be stroked to death, like of mice and men. I got a, I got a mice and men, he's a big guy, he's mentally challenged and he loved puppies and he wanted a puppy and he loved it so much and he petted it and petted it and petted it. The problem is he petted it too much and squeezed it too hard. And pastorally sometimes that's the thing. We, we squeeze and we pat too much. Right? Evangelists would always come in and get everybody saved and then leave. And nobody would know what to do. That's why we need a five-fold ministry. But the whole thing is that we're self-consumed. Because we don't know who we are. And, 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 and God's been trying to tell us who we are. We're a child of God. And over the last two years, three years, God has really been putting that home in this church. And, that, and I know there's a lot of you new here. But that's part of the problem. This is my frustration as a pastor. That we are now having an influx of people. And every service we're having three to four new people. And I need 
the ones that have been here to get ready and get right and get into place and quit being consumed with self. Oh, y'all didn't like that, I know. I just aired our dirty laundry in front of everybody. Well, that's who I am, and that's the way it is, and that's me. Because I'm not talking about just you. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about where I'm consumed with myself. i got to lay down my life, and I don't care how much it costs, and I don't care how many hours, and I don't care what all it costs. I am not my own. I am God's, and I have to do what he wants me to do. For as long as he wants me to do it, and as how much it costs, it doesn't matter. That's the kingdom of God. It's life or death. It's that serious. It's not just a casual thing. It's not just a social thing. Church is not just today. Church is every day. Church is God's body, is Jesus' body. And we, have a, uh, we are in called into that, and we have something to do. We're called. We have work. And we're so caught up with what this isn't and what that isn't and what this one's doing and what that's not doing and why we don't like this and we don't like that and all that. And it doesn't matter. It's what he wants. And before I get, Clayton, next week, let's get that green cord because it's been bugging me for three weeks. Um, we've got a call, and we're desperately needed. And the thing is, is that it's, it's fourth quarter, and we're behind. And what is, what's bad is, you, you, y'all ever, y'all, when I grew up, we played to win. And not everybody was winners. And not everybody got a trophy. And if you cried, you got beat up. And, 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 and sometimes you got sat on the bench. But that didn't, make you, that didn't make you a loser. That made you, you weren't good at the sport. Find something else. Find what you're good at and excel in it. Not bring down the standard of everything else. And I don't know why I'm going there. But why am I going there? I know. Uh, what, what? God, I hurt my mind. Ah, oh, that hurt. I came from a, a, a place where, 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 where everybody wasn't a winner. Everybody didn't get a trophy. And, and you have to press on and press in and do. It's not just going to become. You got to do something. I, I have no clue where I was going. What was I saying before I said that? Fourth quarter. I know, but I got stuck on... On that, uh, we know no. We know fourth quarter. Oh, I know why. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Because all right, but I went to that story because of this. Because that that what they started doing is then they started substituting people in, so everybody could play. But when it's fourth quarter and you're about to lose, you don't want little Jimmy in there who can't catch. All nothing. We're winning. And you're like, oh, that's, that's softball, that's this, but it's life. All right, let's, let's reverse it. When you are in desperate need, and Pastor Nett's standing right here, and I'm standing right here. I'm not going to say anybody else, but someone's over here, and someone's over there. Where are you going for prayer? Close your eyes and be honest.
If I was in the line, I'd go to her too. <laughs> but you just proved my point. Our ushers, our ushers are failing. Deacons, you're fired. She should have been out three sayings ago. But we're in the fourth quarter, and I am moving forward, and God's pulling out some of my best players. But I may be just looking with my natural eye. And you may be a gem all covered up. But let me tell you this. I see a lot of poop in the dirt. And it's time to get it off and allow it to shine through. Right? So we got a lot of new folks coming in here. We got a lot of people getting in position, uh, uh, needing, needing God, needing an answer, needing a change, needing what God's supposed to have. And we've got God removing and placing people in other ministries. This ain't people me being offended and, and, and leaving because they don't like what I said, which is that's often that happens. And if you're new, um, I probably will say something you don't like. I love you anyway. Um, I, that's the truth. I don't, I'm not. I'm not your typical pastor. I'm not going to say things to make you feel good. I'm not going to blow smoke. I'm going to, I'm going to speak the way I speak, and I'm going to talk the way I talk. And I'm, he chose me to do this. This is who I am. I can't change it. That's it. I will do my best to, 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 to stay within the boundaries, but sometimes my boundaries are a lot bigger than yours. He put me here, and, and, and this is another thing. You come in here, and you love how the anointing is. You love the presence of God, and you come in here, and you're like, oh, this is great. Then quit trying to change it. Amen. You, you think this is me? This is not me. This is him. You're not fighting me. You're fighting him. I argue with him all the time about stuff that goes on around here. It's fourth quarter, and he's removing people, and, they, and I, I, it's not because they're fitting. He's putting them in other his strategic places. So you're called. You're up next. When, when, when who's your ever your favorite team is, whatever your favorite thing is, when they go down, when that best player, it's next person up. And you're needed, and if you're sitting at home whining about what you ain't getting, you're consumed with self. And there's a lot of times I'm at home not calling or talking to somebody or not doing for someone where I see. I know my weak areas. I know where I am weak. I know, God talks to me all the time. You don't have to tell me. I'm, I'm harder on me than you will ever be. And every time I mess up, I go home and I rehearse it and rehearse it. And what is so irritating is when I'm in that moment and I know I'm supposed to do something different and I do the same thing. Just because I'm in this position doesn't make me that above you. We're one. He's king. The rest of us are underneath him. But that doesn't mean when I'm in this office that you don't honor this office. But we get consumed with us and we get what, what we and all this and, 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 all, and sometimes you're right. That's the irritating part. You're right on the subject. You are right. Go home and look in the mirror and say, I was right. I, he told me. He finally admitted it. I was right. Yeah, it's recorded. You can listen to it over and over. He said it. I was right. Now, repeat this over and over. It don't matter. Look at me. It don't matter. 
Because he's still going to make you do what you're supposed to do. And sometimes it's wait and shut your mouth until it changes. And believe me, y'all think I say stuff. There's a lot more in here that doesn't come out. And I'm waiting and being patient. saying, what does this have to do with me being dear to God? Well, because you're dear to God, he needs you. And there's someone else that's dear to him that he's sending you to. And this whole letter that, that's in 2 Timothy is about being a pastor and how Timothy is to pastor the church that he's at. But I want to challenge you this morning. If you leave here and you go to your home, to your work, to your school, and you are different there than in here. And they don't know that you're Christian. I want you to come up here and get saved. Because you ain't. Because you're ashamed of him. You can come to the altar any time you want. It, it, if you're ashamed of him, he's, he's, he's just on the altar. You, to him, you and him. You and him. Are, are you ashamed of him? Are you conveying Christ? It's life or death, folks, and we're playing like, like it's okay and we can do whatever we want to do, but you're, you're crucial, and you're here hearing the good. It's like you've got the medicine, you've got the penicillin, you've got the, you've got the limb, you've got, you've got the answer, and you're going and you're in amongst all of them, and you're letting them die around you. And it's all because he didn't say hello to me. He said that from the pulpit. She did this. She did that. She did this. All that because we're consumed with self. And we make church about me. Or we make church about the operation. Even when it's good and everything's great. Oh, man, it was a great service. We was having all good time dancing. All right. No, how did it change you and affect you? And how effective did you get when you went out there? Because this is the thing, you are the evangelist wherever you're at. But see, you can't just evangelize and talk, and that's what we want to do. See, that's what a lot of evangelists do now. They come in with this great show and this great presentation. They have great worship, and all things great, and everything's just all oh, awesome. And then this great move, and people get saved. And then people leave. Or, no, they don't get saved. They come up and they, they're wanting an encounter with God. They have an encounter with God, but they don't make a decision. See, my favorite scripture is the young, young, young ruler. He comes up and he, tells, he, t- he says, Jesus, you're good, and, and, and what must I do to have eternal life? Because and he, and Jesus says, do all these things. He goes, I've done all those from youth. And then he says, the one thing you lack, he says, you're, take all your riches and give to the poor and come follow me. And he walked away. Why did he walk away? Because he got challenged on a thing that was dear to his heart. And see, so we come into church and we sleep. And we don't realize the importance of what's going on. And we come up here and we have an encounter and it all sounds good and oh, everything's okay. But when the word comes, change this. Church was good. Church was fine. 
whatever it is yours. It may be to be here. It may be to read. It may be to worship. It may be to give. It may be what. Uh, it may be to stop cussing, stop drinking, stop uh, doing drugs. Whatever the thing is, you get challenged, and it's like, I thought he loved me just for me, and we walk away. But. Some of us st- stay completely, but the others, that they keep coming and act like everything's okay. Why? Because we don't want to face that. Now, I don't, I'm, I, look, if you've got something in your life and, you, and you're asking, God's, God's faithful to forgive, and he works in you the will to do and the power to do. My thing is, is are you honest with yourself? Is, is, are you wanting to hold on to it, or is God trying to get it out of you? And, 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 you're, and you're letting him take, work it out of you. It's two different things. Two different things. But see, this is the thing. It's when once you grab hold of it, you've got to go give it to someone else. You've got the answer of life. He's given it to you. And so you've got to go tell somebody and be evangelist and say, i got the answers. I'm not perfect yet, but I know where to go. And, but they're like you. They're hard-headed. And they don't listen. And so what we do right here with you, you need to do with them in your cubicle. And so you're preaching. The thing is, you're a better preacher than us because you have the ability to act it out. You have the ability to demonstrate the words that we are talking about. The words that we read, that is more convincing than anything else. It's more convincing than, y'all, y'all know I'm a good preacher. Y'all, I, I, I may not be a good pastor. I may not be a lot of good things, but you know I'm a good preacher. But even as good as I am, when y'all see me walk it, that's 10 times more effective than when I make you feel good. See, when I do stuff and y'all are like, I didn't think he was that way, y'all get all gooey. Well, the people that are watching you, they do the same thing. They do the same thing. They watch you, and you, you talk about Jesus all day long. You got, you got your little bumper sticker. You got your little Bible that, that's got dust on it because you never open it on the corner of your desk. You got your little plaque and your, your little, your, your, your devotional that's still stuck on December and it's June. Uh, you got all those things and, and the, the dirty joke comes around and you're like, and you're laughing the hardest and you're preaching. But see, he's talking to Timothy. He said, my dearest Timothy. He's saying, my dearest, whatever your name is. You are called. You are needed. I need you. And I don't need you to be perfect. I don't need you to, I, I, I don't need you to be like Pastor Rick. I need you to be you. I need you to be you. And I need you to continue to change. I need you to continue to let my Holy Spirit work on you. But I need you to be you in that place. And I need you to just open your mouth, and I need you to just be there, and I need you to be consistent, and I need you to show them, and I need you to extend your love, and I need you to be me there. And be that pastor. And be that person. I need you to love them. Because you are dear to me. Because I need you. The King of Kings is saying, I need you. I need you. Close your eyes. I want you to look in your looker with your eyes closed. And I need you to look on the throne in heaven. Past the clouds, past the gates, down the streets made of gold, into the palace across the courtyard, across the the altar, 
up the steps to his throne. And I need you to see him sitting there. And I need you to look in his eyes. I need you to see and feel and know. He's speaking to you and he's saying, I love you. You're precious to me. You're valuable to me. You are a man or a woman after my own heart. And I've given you all the gifts and all the abilities to accomplish everything that I've assigned to you. And at the right moment and the right time, I'm going to awaken some things that are, are dormant right now. And I'm going to strengthen some areas that seem weak to you right now. And I'm going to heighten and enlighten some things that seem dim. And I am going to clean you up. Don't worry about you. When I speak to you, I'm going to empower you to stop. Just worry about staying focused on me. And then keep your eyes connected with my eyes. Keep your heart connected with my heart. Keep your ears connected to my voice. Now, I'm going to take the coal and I'm going to cleanse your lips. And I'm going to send you Now go be my son in front of him. You're dearest to me. And wait, before you leave, and before you get up, and before you go, I want you to know how much I love you. I want you to know how much I need you. I want you to understand how much I love you. Now, before you leave, before you exit the door, tell them what I told you. Tell them what I told you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Any pastors and deacons and ministers up here, if you need to pray, that's you. You can pray. If you need to go to the altar, you can. But I want every head bowed, and I want every eye closed, and I want the front two lights off, and I want to take five minutes. I'm finished early today. I want to take five, ten minutes, and I want, I want you to make a decision. I want you to think about it. And if you need to stand with somebody in agreement and, may, and say, look, I, I need to get saved. I need to change. I am commissioned by the Lord. I, 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 and just someone just to agree with you, these folks are up here to, to pray with you. Every head bowed, every eye closed, play softly, Clay. Every head bowed. I want, I want it quiet in here. I don't want a bunch of talking, a bunch, bunch of moving. It's not time to go anywhere. Just give it five more minutes. Come on. Go ahead, Clay. Come on, God's talking to you guys. Don't deny him. Come on. It don't matter if you're messed up. It don't matter if you're still on drugs. It don't matter if you're, if you're still in the issue. God will work that out. He's saying, come, you're precious to me. Come, I will clean you up. Quit being stubborn. Quit being stubborn. You know he's talking to you. You know he's talking to you. Yes, everything's going to change. Yes, you're going to have to stop that. Yes, you're going to have to make that, make that difference. Yes, you're going to have to do that. But every area that he's worked, he works on will now bring life. Will now... Bring abundance. Come on. Every, every heart. Come on. Everybody. Quiet. 
Hearts before the Lord. Hearts before the Lord. Come on. He is forgiven. You are forgiven. every eye closed, I want you to just reach over and touch the person beside you. And by chance, that person's the one that should have came up. I just want you to pray that they'll trust God. That they'll know that He loves them. That He wants them. Every head bowed, every, no, 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 every head bowed, every eye closed. One last thing I want you to do. Since I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to operate this way. Since you didn't come up, it means you're in the game and you're ready. Or you don't want to be. But those that are in the game and are ready, I want you now to begin to seek God's face for the person that you are assigned to to minister the gospel to. It may be one, it may be several, but I want you to ask the Lord right now, show me that person who I'm to minister to. Show me that person that I'm supposed to, to, to deliver the word to. And then ask for specifics. What do I need to tell them? What, how do I need to show them? But give me the, ask him, just Give me direction. Give me uh, understanding. Give me, uh, uh, g open their ears to hear me. Give me favor with them. Uh, let them hear my heart. Father, let me remove every beam out of my eyes that, 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 uh, uh, that I can help them remove the specks. Help me, Father God, get in the right place. Uh, begin to uh, cry out to the Lord and say, show me, Father God. And then the areas that I'm weak in, the areas that I have failed you in, Father God, help me 
to clean that up and help me. You, your word tells me that you work in me the will to do and the power to do. So, Father God, I'm counting on you to do that. Help me to be the, the person that I'm supposed to be, but help me be effective, Father God. And then, Father, bring that person in my life. And, Father, if I'm being hypocritical, if, Father God, I'm a different person at church or at home, I mean, at, at, at home and, and a different person at church and home that I am at work, Father God, let me be the same. Let me be, Father God, remove all the masks, Father God, and let me be exposed completely, Father God, and let me be real with uh, all of myself and all of the people around me. Then, Father God, where I need to be corrected, let me be corrected. And in the areas, Father God, that I'm strong, let me be strong in. And Father God, let me minister the gospel to people. Let me be effective, Father God. Don't let me, I don't want to try to be like anybody else who I've heard. I want to be me. I want to be the best me I can. I want to deliver the message the way I, I know, the way I feel, Father God. Not according to what I, 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 I am twisting the word, but according to your word, but me, my way. Father God, the way you made me. Father, let me be anointed. Anoint my hands, Father God. Anoint my mouth, Father God. Anoint my ears to be specific in hearing what you, you want said, Father God. Let me be precise in what I need to do. Father, help me to be effective. Father, let me, let me bring someone to the kingdom this week. Let me deliver them. Father, 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 we love you. We praise you. You are worthy of all praise and honor and glory. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're the great I am. You're worthy of everything that we do and everything that we are. You're worthy of every dime we have. You're worthy of every thought we have. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Just a few more seconds. We got what, one more we're praying with. And just, just ask God, just what what comes to your mind about praying for these people? And be the evangelist and the pastor. Where you go. We're gonna equip you to be the teacher. tonight you'll learn to rightly divide the word I, I am going to continue on with this message i got some more in second timothy that i want to add to this and uh, i just I, I, it's all in my notes i just spoke from my heart today but i got some points on how to how to do this moving forward okay come on let's all stand hold hands. Now, if you're supposed to join the church today, I know two of you are, but there, I think there was a couple or more that I don't, I don't remember who it was. If you're supposed to join the church today, I need you to come right here. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's keep respect. Rob's still praying. Come on. Stand right here in front of Pastor James. Okay. I think there's one more. There he is. There he is. Now, I can't, y'all can step up a little bit so we Every hip out, every eye closed. Come on, let's, let's, let's intercede for Rob and, and help him. Let's praise for this young man. Help participate. Help, help. And if you get something, you need to come up here and, and, and talk and help us. Don't just sit back and think about lunch. It's going to be there. It's either going to be good, it's going to be bad. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. If 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 Lauren cooked it, it's gonna be bad. If Nisi cooked it, it's gonna be good. Mama Nat cooked it. It's gonna be great. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. I was dreading today. I, I kind of like what happened today. God is good. I got out of the way for one time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is 
worthy of all praise and honor. He is. He is. Heavenly Father. Okay, can you guys step up in the middle and get the pastors and the elders and the deacons all around them? All right. Now let's go, all the members. Let's come around and get around them. All right, y'all get some oil and anoint them. Let's, let's, let's start pouring oil all over the new members. What do y'all think? No? Here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. You know our hearts here at the point. You know what we believe. And we, we Father, come to you and we first say thank you. Because we believe wholeheartedly. Here you go, baby. Uh, we believe wholeheartedly that you place the members in the body. And, Father God, that, that we are to submit to that, that we hear your voice and, and we are obedient to that, that calling and that placing. It's not just about him. Happenstance. It's not just because we like the place. It's not because we like the preacher or the music or whatever. It's because you've called us here. So, Father God, we want to say thank you for the gift that you're placing in this body. All four of them, Father God. And then, Father God, we want to thank you for their obedience. And, Father God, they're, they're thanking you, Father. Now, Father, I'm asking, we're asking, because they're obedient, because they got a God in line, we ask for you, you to bless their obedience. We ask that you pour it out on them. We ask, Father God, that they have favor. In the, in, 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 in the coming and the going. And all that they put their hands to, Father God, let them prosper. All seed that's been planted that hasn't come forth in harvest, let it come forth in Jesus' name, Father God. We just ask for financial favor on them. Pour it out on them, Father God. Everything that they know about God, Father God, it, it, it be enlightened and, re, and, and rekindled and brought forth, Father God. And But we also ask that you put a new hunger and a new thirst for your word and your presence in them, Father God, to give them the desire to be in your presence and, and Father God to give them a desire to be filled with your Holy Spirit and Father make the word come alive and Father God everything that's in them that is dormant Father God make it come alive again and Father God every time they read and every time they see something new Father God we ask that you have a, a new light on it and a, and a new power on it Father God and let them see and understand it and Father God bring it to life to them Father God and then Father we just ask that you begin to reveal to them their, their position in the place, what they are to do, what, what they're called for, Father God, because the, they have a calling, they have a purpose, Father God. We know and believe strongly, Father God, that they have something to do within this house. We believe every part of our, our physical body has a purpose. We know everybody in the spiritual body has a purpose. So we ask for enlightenment on that. And then as leadership, we ask that you give us discernment and he ask that you give us the ability to fine tune it, equip them, exhort them, encourage them, disciple them in that, in that call. And Father God, just bless that and bring it into unity and bring it into fulfillment, Father. Now, Father God, as a body, we come to you and we make a promise. We, we make a vow, a commitment, a covenant today. That, Father God, that they're joining this body and becoming members. And then, Father God, they, they are making a commitment to us and we're making a commitment to them. That we'll stand beside them and we'll come along and, and, and support them spiritually, physically, and emotionally. In every area that they need to be shored up, we'll shore up. In every place that's strong, Father God, they'll give us strength. And Father God, we'll bless them and they'll bless us. And we'll come alongside and we'll commit to you, Father, that we'll help them. 
And Father God, we just ask that you bless this covenant. We plead the blood over it. And we ask for your help to fulfill the covenant in every area of our lives, Father God. We're family now. And Father, as they have come in with hands laid on and received and welcomed and encouraged and exhorted, Father God, if by chance you send them somewhere else, Father God, they'll leave the same way, anointed, covered, and rejoiced and, 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 and blessed as they go to their next place. So, Father, we have made that commitment to you today, and we say, uh, uh, we say thank you, and we ask for your blessing upon it. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Hug your neighbor. Hug them. Tell them they're glad. You're glad they came. Glad they're here. Tell everybody, say hallelujah. It's over. But also, go tell somebody about the gospel. Amen? Hug, hug, hug three people before you leave. If you're not a hugger, then shake their hands. One, two, three. I got my three out of the way. All right. Be blessed. <laughs>